What's the word, y'all? Gary Payton II has a fractured left elbow. We'll have MRI tomorrow. I know that seems like it doesn't matter because Gary Payton is like, who? That's actually huge. And I guess we'll talk about that. Wow. Um, well, nobody expected the two, three matchups to end in the sweep. And if you did, that's hella disrespectful to Boston or hella disrespectful to Memphis because both of those teams get hoop. Um, and we saw that today, man. We're going into game number three, one, one on both sides. And I'm excited to talk about these games. Let's start off with the first one because well, oh, well, the first half Boston Celtics looked decent. In game number one, they got punched in the face from the very beginning and they did not know how to handle it. In game two, they did the punching. And a lot of that, and you know what? You know, we gonna, we had to give our MVPs to, like, Jalen Brown, of course, because uh, Jalen Brown heard us talking. And game number one, Jalen Brown basically had his worst performance of all time, it felt like. And in game number two, he came out and scored, what, 19 points in the first quarter? He was hitting heavily contested threes. He was hitting step backs, turnarounds. He was doing everything you want him to do in a series like this. And he cut down those turnovers from seven yesterday's game to just two today. He was amazing. And the first half, I saw the worst basketball I've ever seen from Giannis. We're talking about a two-time MVP, um, a Hall of Fame player you know what i'm saying a finals mvp from last year in the first half of this game Giannis in his 18 minutes played two for 12 0 for three from three four assists two rebounds five points two turnovers the the boston celtics had a game plan and they executed on that in the first half now second half Giannis came out a little bit different you know he was nine for 15 from the field um, he put up 23 points. By that point, it was just, it was all over with at the end of the day because that first half was so, such a big half. And then when you have Jason Tatum in the second half also playing very well, they just, there was just not enough run for the Milwaukee Bucks to, to make this competitive. But Boston, bro, you know, this is the defense I expected them to play, but I didn't expect it to go this great in the first half. Like Giannis is still Giannis. You know what I'm saying? He's still an all time great, a guy that feels like he could get a basket whenever he wants to. But again, I, they they really did their thing in the first half. And if you remember my recap for game number one, I was talking about how I thought that the, the Boston Celtics did a decent job, a very good job of forcing Giannis to miss some shots that he normally makes. And it's, in this one, they also did that. But the thing that did kill them in game one but didn't kill them in game two was the three-point shots from the others. Did they hit a total of three threes this game? They went three for 18 from three this game. That is insane. We didn't get no Bobby Portis threes. We didn't get no Grayson Allen threes in 28 minutes. They were getting ran off the line, and that was more of what the Boston Celtics had did the entirety of, not the entirety, but the last four to five months, it felt like, of the regular season, where it didn't matter who you were or where you were, the Boston Celtics were contesting shots. And because of that, the closeouts were so good, Grayson Allen, the guy that can normally hit that shot, didn't even have time to get it off. So I think that the defense in the first half was great. But I'm trying to figure out what version of each team do I believe for these next four games. Because in game one, the Milwaukee Bucks looked amazing. Uh, well, they won the game. They looked way better than they did today. But amazing is still a stretch. They, I don't know if they looked amazing in game one. They looked good enough to win the game. But in game two, the Boston Celtics was that. And then in the second half, of this game, the Milwaukee Bucks are like the better team. But the first half, the, the Boston Celtics were elite. I don't know. This is why I don't like predictions. I do them for the sake of clickbait and for video titles. But I don't like predictions because it's so hard to predict. I think that, like, like I'm a guy that can admit that, that I watch a ton of basketball, but there's still a lot that I don't necessarily understand, right? So we talk about what Ime Yudoka changed. I guess I could give you, like, some, some layman's terms. But, like, high-level stuff, I can't even predict what the hell Coach Bud is going to do in Game 3 to make it better for this one. Or what Ime might change for Game 3 so the second half of the Milwaukee Bucks don't go as crazy as this. The, you know, it's fun. It has it has been fun. The real MVP, like I said, Jalen Brown, great. Um, Jason Tatum, great. Actually, the MVP was their jump shooting. Now, we talked about a game number one, the Milwaukee Bucks are a team that's going to make you take threes. And in game number one, I think they sh attempted like 50 threes. They were 36% from three, which is not bad at all. That's actually pretty solid for 50 made threes or 50 attempted threes. But today, it got up to 46. You got five threes from Jason Tatum, six threes from Jalen Brown, six threes from Grant Williams. Shout out to the homie. Y'all know anybody that follow me on Twitter in the NBA world of or I've had a conversation with is the homie. So Grant Williams is the homie. He ended up with 50% from the field, six made threes, and elite level defense on Giannis pretty much all night. You know, him and um, Al Horford and Robert Williams, they really did their thing. Now, they got into a lot of foul trouble, especially in that second half, but they did their thing in that first half to basically suck the, all of the air away for the Milwaukee Bucks. So I'm excited to see 
who comes out punching in game three because what it seems like is whoever wins that first quarter might end up winning that game you know that that's what it feels like whoever's winning this first quarter is gonna have all the momentum for game number three I'm so happy that we got a good Jalen Brown game and this was a bit scary because obviously Marcus Smart did not play he was sitting courtside with his rude jacket on and his green hair so they needed a good Jason uh, Jalen Brown game because Derek White to give you nothing offensively he, his defense was elite in this game too and that's something you kind of expect from Derek White at this point but he can't hit a shot and that's basically been the case for the entire season for them but he's such a good defensive player and he's pretty decent when it comes to playmaking or just making the right move or making the right read um that you can live with him being 0 for 6 in a lot of cases today was one of those cases he had a, the best plus minus on the entire team with zero made field goals and five fouls <laughs> insane that sounds like a Marcus Smart stat yep that was this is Marcus Smart and Derek White's body but you got to go back to Milwaukee man you got to go back to Milwaukee Boston and take home court advantage back I know those Milwaukee Bucks fans are crazy and I guess I guess the Boston Celtics fans are crazy too but you get what I'm saying it's going to be tough to win those games but I think they could but the Bucks could too you know we were making jokes and stuff talking about how um Brooke Lopez or Hakeem Olajuwon bro didn't even attempt a shot to like the fourth quarter it felt like Hakeem Olajuwon would never you know he would never I like going to NBA.com and looking at like the the hustle stats, especially with two teams like this. They pride themselves on the defensive side of the ball, just kind of kind of looking at like contested shots and um, offensive box outs and stuff like that. It's just like some NBA nerdy stuff, and I'm I'm basically that right now. Uh, Jason Tatum and Al Horford. I'm sorry, Al Horford and Robert Williams contesting a ton of shots, which makes sense because they were guarding Giannis a lot of the game. But you know what? I said um, Rick Lopez wasn't was in Akeem Elijah one. He led the league or led the game and contested the shots still. So I don't know. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like he was Akeem Elijah one today, you know? But again, the Boston Celtics did hit a lot of outside shots. So what do I expect for game number three? Hopefully we just get a good game, ladies and gentlemen, because I've been enjoying these. Even though this was somewhat of a blowout, or not somewhat, it was definitely a blowout. I still enjoyed watching this one. Because even when the Milwaukee Bucks start to go on their little run, I was like, is it over? Even in in the group chat, Derek was like, I'm looking at that money line of the bosses or the uh the Milwaukee Bucks. I think it was at plus plus eighteen hundred. And Derek was like, Oh, I want to take that money line. I don't know if he ended up doing it. I actually encouraged him to do it. So I hope he didn't take my <laughs> I hope he didn't take my advice. I'm, I'm a bad friend, I guess. Let's get to the next game. The Memphis Grizzlies win. Do not get swept on their home court, which is the best thing. I think a ton of this game went down to, of course, Demetrius Jamal Jamal Morant. He was insane today. 47 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. And you know what? In game number one, damn, I hate when I be doing these recaps and then I say something and then people clip it and send it to me. Because in that video, I was saying like, damn, I think John Morant relied on his 3 too much or fell in love with his 3 too much. That 3 point was hidden today. 5 from 12 from 3. He ended up with the same amount of made threes as Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. He only attempted 12. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson attempted 23 together. Demetrius. Jamel Morant was insane, especially in that fourth quarter. Um, I know there was that one foul with Draymond Green that I cannot wait to see the two-minute report. I think it was within the last two minutes. The two-minute report where it was a foul on him for John Morant. I think that kind of swayed the momentum a little bit because the Warriors were starting to have a little comeback. Comeback, if you want to call it that. Um, but, bro. Him breaking down Jordan Poole, or when the Warriors are trying to play the foul game, him going back court and hitting, hitting um, Wiggins with a little in and now getting past him. He is just such a blast, bro. So we got Luka dropping 45 yesterday, John Moran dropping 47 today. The league is just in such good hands. The Memphis Grizzlies won this game when we got a bad Jaron Jackson shooting night. We got another. Nothing performance from um, Desmond Bain, at least from scoring the ball. Dylan Brooks got ejected, which we have to talk about because that's actually huge. That's huge for this game and huge for the series. But they ended up winning this one. Zaire Williams, who had been injured for the entirety of the playoffs so far, came in and the rookie. That bro was like 19 years old or maybe 20 at this point. He had four threes and two of them back to back in the fourth quarter, which were huge. Um, Tyus Jones, one of the better backup point guards in the league, struggled. Kyle Anderson struggled. But they won this game because John Morant refused to let them lose. And I love those type of performances, man. And sometimes those performances don't end in 47. Sometimes those performances end in like PJ Tucker, seven points, three rebounds and two steals. But like when I see a player think to themselves, we are not losing this game and they go out to do everything in their power to do it. I love it. And that's what we got from John Moran. We have to talk about the Dylan Brooks, Gary Payton, the second foul. Um, if you did not see it, Gary Payton a second on a fast break all alone until he wasn't and Dylan Brooks tried to contest the shot hit him in his head he fell on his shoulder or his arm and literally as I started recording 
he fractured his elbow and that's huge Gary Payton II if you remember was one of my players when it came to um, my all defensive team even though he didn't play a ton of minutes in the regular season I knew how good of a defensive player he was whether it be just all of his IQ or just one-on-one -on -one de defense and in game number one the Warriors decided we're going to start Gary Payton II because we need somebody that can keep up keep up with Ja don't expect Gary Payton II to stop Ja because Ja is still Ja right we're still talking about an all-NBA player here um and just one of the better all-NBA players too but you needed somebody to at least contain him make him work a little bit harder and that's what Gary Payton the second job was so to have him leave or be out in the two minutes open the game up dramatically for John ja Morant no ifs ands or buts about it no ifs ands or buts about it and Dylan Brooks fouling out or oh, getting ejected W for the Grizz because we ain't got to worry about him jacking up 14 threes and hitting two of them that that changes the series a little bit because the Warriors don't have many off or defensive people that can, you can put on John ja Morant and say we we think he can slow him down and you see that John ended up with 47 tonight does he score 47 of if Gary Payton II is there I don't think so he still probably has a great game I'm not taking that from Ja but it would have been a lot harder to do the things he was doing if he wasn't getting switched on to Steph Curry all these possessions you know what I'm saying so to have Gary Payton I mean, you fracture your elbow. I'm assuming, I ain't a doctor, but I'm assuming a fractured elbow means that he's probably going to miss some time. And that changes the way Steve Kerr has to coach this series. The Warriors were in this game, even with them shooting 18% from three. And like I said, five from 23 from three from Clay and Steph Curry. Actually, let's add Jordan Poole in there. Actually, just, just take everybody into that. They were seven and 36 from three from Jordan Poole, Steph Curry, Wiggins and Klay Thompson I don't expect them to shoot 18% from three again this series I don't expect it because a, a lot of them are open looks you know the Wiggins shots a lot of Wiggins threes are going to be open looks in that corner he just bricked all of them he did have the poster and it's not it's not very often you see Wiggins show hella emotion and we saw Wiggins show hella emotion he was like talking trash I'm like dang these Memphis boys get under your skin Wiggs I mean I like to see it then everybody else be yelling when they posterize and Wiggins the only dude that just be like I dunked on Cat. Cool. Let's get back on defense. <laughs> Today he showed that emotion. Um, so they were in this game, even though they could not see the bottom of the rim from the three pointer. I don't expect that to happen again. But I am very curious to see what Steve Kerr decides to do when it comes to stopping John ja Morant or slowing down John ja Morant. Five threes from Ja. Insane, bro. Wow. Three point shooter. In the beginning of the season, the first couple months, he was like a 37% three point shooter. Then the last couple months, he couldn't hit anything. Hey, if you catch a stride at the right time, it's going to open up the game. It opens up the game for him dramatically because you know if he's getting downhill, there's not many people can stop him. But if you also at the garden from three, kind of tough. Kind of tough. Draymond Green also gets hit in the face in this one, and he has this big old swelling on his eye, and he basically missed the entire first quarter. Um, so the Warriors definitely got banged up in this one. And the least valuable player today, hate to hate to do it, Clay Thompson, man. Five for uh, nineteen from the field, two for uh twelve from three. There was one basket or one attempt that he had, and I hope it's up. Yes, I always film these videos at the right time. I want to see if I can find this clip. I think it was in the third quarter. Clay Thompson took like an ill-advised ass shot. It's hard to say that because he's Clay Thompson. Right, because and he can make pretty much any shot on the court. But like, I think it was a transition turnaround mid-range jump shot, and like the body language from Steph Curry was like, "Are you serious right now?" Let me see if I can find that clip. Um, I do want to say very confidently, I'm sure there's going to be a game in the series, probably Game Six, where Klay Thompson looks amazing. Game Six, Clay is a real thing. But anyway, let me get this clip for y'all. This is a fast break, kinda, kind, not even actually. No, there's four Grizzlies back on defense right now, Clay. All right, four Grizzlies back on defense, and and look at this is the play right here. Step back, jump shot. Look at uh, Steph Curry in this corner of your screen. He dropped his arms like, are we serious right now? And I'm not no body language expert. I I'm a guy that typically don't even read body language, but I just thought this one was funny. He like, come on, dog. We serious right now? You know, this is the time when we reset the O or even hit Jordan Poole in the corner or something. There's a, there's a lot better options than... The shot that we got. Like I said, man, it, it, there's going to be a game. There's going to be a game where Klay Thompson is him. Um, it's just a matter of time. But right now, through two games... It's not looking great. Yet through these first two games, Klay Thompson shooting 38% from the field. I mean, I'm sorry, 28% from the field, 22% from three. It's not the greatest. Obviously, it's it's literally the worst. I'm looking at everybody else. It's it's not the greatest. It's, it's literally the worst. Um, actually, it's not because you know you know <laughs> whose numbers are worse. Dylan Brooks. But the difference is Klay Thompson's average at 36 minutes per game. But because Dylan Brooks got ejected in two minutes of this one, he only playing 16 per. But Dylan Brooks is shooting 18% from the field, 22% from three. They having a mid-off, y'all. They having a mid-off. Shot averaging 40 on the series. 
39% from three. Sheesh. Uh, I'm excited for the rest of the series. I don't anticipate that the Warriors are going to shoot 18% from three again in this series. I also don't anticipate there's going to be many people on the Warriors that can check Ja Morant. So, you know, we, we got to see how it goes. Post-game interview from Steve Kerr says that Dylan Brooks broke the code players have not to injure someone and jeopardize his career. Uh, the line is pretty clear. He added, uh, you don't hit a guy when he's midair, club him, break his elbow. That's where the line is. Um, words from Steve Kerr right there. No no comment. I mean, obviously, the play was not cool whatsoever. They, You can't even, you cannot convince me there's an argument that he was making a play for the ball. Um, You're like, Kenny, Draymond Green. Draymond Green doesn't get a pass for his bullshit either. Like, I'm calling out all of it. You know, any any play like that where it's undoubtedly, you cannot convince me that that was a ball play. There's no way. Um, It's unacceptable in the game of basketball, bro. It's unacceptable. But Steve Kerr, what about Zaza Pachulia? Huh? What about Zaza Pachulia? You know, I made a tweet on, on one of my accounts that was like, if I'm ever, if I'm ever unironically biased, because sometimes I'll say some crazy like F future bull um, Anthony Davis, which, you know, not a reality. I'm just talking just to talk. Um, if I'm ever unironically biased, please call me out. And, and it's mostly because like I was looking through subreddits and I think I was in the Warriors subreddit. And there was a clip from game number one where John Moran scored on Jonathan Kaminga and he said he can't effing guard me, right? And there was people and I'm not, this doesn't account for the entire Warriors fan base. I can't believe I got to say that because people are gonna be like, Kenny, we not all like that. Of course not. Uh, but there's some people within that subreddit that was like, oh man, I I hate him. He's not, you know, trash talking, show bold and bold. Well, that's never the right to go, way to go. And my mind I'm thinking that motherfucker, that motherfucker Steph Curry be shimmying on people. Showmanship is part of basketball, and it's okay. If I was John Morant and I got a bucket, I'ma tell somebody he can't guard me either. Or if I'm Steph Curry and I just hit a heavily contested three, that was important. I'ma shimmy too. Like that is undoubtedly biased towards your favorite team, right? And I never want to be that guy. And and Steve Kerr, I agree with your sentence. I agree with just the sentiment behind this. There's no, what Dylan Brooks did is unacceptable. But what you say about Zaza when he fucked up a uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard's year? Not even year. The next six years, it feel like a Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi ain't been healthy since that day. <laughs> you feel me? I don't know, man. Y'all keep me up to that, too. If we somehow get to the point in 12 years where the Bulls are, like, really good, um, and I mean, like, really, really good, not just make playoff goods, but, like, really, really good, and I start spewing some some bias stuff, please, please call me out because I'm not above any of that, all right? Okay, cool. Appreciate you watching. I'm out.